Oh my god. I, 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 I can't believe this. I oh know. I, Frankie and I just saw Casey the other day at this dance club. He, I guess he was scouting for locations for a shooter. Scouting for drug dealers. Casey was working undercover for the police. I mean, I, I didn't even really know him, but it seemed like he was really nice. He was one of the best. How's Allie holding up? Stupid question, and here I am bummed that Frankie didn't show last night. I mean, I can't even... Well, she's better than she was yesterday. She can imagine that she is. This is a terrible thing. What is? And please don't say it's happening to me. you want to do it. Look, let's get one thing straight, all right? Well? I'm putting my life on the line here to smoke this Carolyn character out. You can still back out. I don't want to back out. What I want is to get these animals that killed my family, all right? And if at all possible, I want to stay alive in the process. Now, if you going into this thing wishing that I was dead because there might be something out there between me and Angie, then there's a damn good chance that I could be dead. How many times could I have just killed you, Jacob? Or watched you die? Angela's not in this. I'm gonna do all I can to get you through this in one piece. You got my word. If that's not enough, there's the door. Who's this? Charles. I thought you might be calling. Carolyn? Let me talk to Angela. Oh, I'm sorry. Dr. Hubbard is, um, well, she's all tied up at the moment. Here. This man's here for observation. I this like man you. is a murderer! Sir, I have to ask you to calm down. Alex. Casey Bowman's body is lying right in that room in there, and if you had your way, Allie would be laying right next to him. Alex, calm Please, down. Sir. I was just having fun with Allie. I wouldn't have hurt her. I like her. Oh, to God. How's Allie doing? Oh, she's doing real good. She's doing real good. You killed her husband. I, Alex, will you get off this guy? Man, I didn't kill anyone. <laughs> a cop. Your beloved Sergeant Graham, he did the dirty deed. I can't even, I can't even count the amount of kids that have died because of your drugs. Hey man, I'm a victim here. Oh, you're a victim. No, you're not a victim. No, you're a victim. Oh, no. Back off, yeah, Detective. Oh, Come on. Oh. You don't stand back and looking at a police brutality charge. Who the hell are you? I'm Jocelyn Brown, Mr. Roberts' attorney. Oh, and that's good. Every piece of filth has an attorney I these days. I said back off. Now do it. Alex, don't let this guy bring you down. It's not going to bring Casey back. Get him out of here. Let's go. Aren't you going to go with your client, counselor? I'm going to say this one more time. 
Detective, back the hell off. If I hear one word about you harassing my client, I will have you in front of the police review board so fast the wind will knock you over. I just can't believe it. I can't believe it. I mean, it's like it's not real or something. Yeah, I know. What a, a waste. It's sad. What a waste of talent. Did Casey take this? Yeah. I think that that was the best work he ever did on that campaign. Do you remember that? You know what? Life is not fair. It's not fair, girls. You can write that down. How long ago did he take this? I don't know what, six months? That was more like six years ago. I was pretty messed up when that was taken. When you and Cooper broke up, wasn't it? Yeah. I uh, needed to talk to Casey more than I needed to talk to anybody else. I remember he was in New York on a photo shoot. And I flew in to see him. He was pretty messed up himself. I think that maybe that's why he understood me so well. I mean, he always seemed to understand me. Which is more than I can say for some people like me. There aren't that many cases in this oh, world. No, there aren't. There certainly aren't. And, um, you know, what? one night he came to the loft looking for help. Look, just, you help me out this one time. I promise I'll never ask you for anything again. You've got that much right. And what's that supposed to mean? I didn't appreciate the fact that you didn't show up for work today. But I'm trying to run a business here. You're I, out partying when you I don't work to I was not out partying. Do. I was home. I was sick. Yeah. You know, we had a deal, Casey. Yeah. If you did anything stronger than ask... You know, I don't like what you're implying, Tess. Fired. <laughs> you can't do that. I can, and I just did, and I don't want you near me. Come my on, head. this is ridiculous. I'll send your stuff to the house. Will you do... No, will you just relax I'm for sorry, a minute? I'm sorry, Casey. You've got to get your act together. Well, how the hell am I supposed to do that now? Well, you know, I helped him all right. I fired him. If I had just been willing to listen... If I had just tried to understand. It's, it's too late for regret, Tess. Well, I know that. That's probably what's bothering me right now. Well, good. Maybe, maybe it will bother you enough so that next time you do better. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, I just know that I really need to be here for Allie right now. Where will the funeral be? Um, Ellie feels that Casey wouldn't have wanted a funeral, so the memorial service is the day after tomorrow. So that means you're going to stick around for a while? For more than a while, I think. When will you leave for Paris? Um, Brie, I really don't know that right now. I think you should just take things one day at a time, you know what? Yeah. Oh, I'm meeting Ellie this afternoon, so i got to get going. Listen, could I go with you because... I would like to go, but I feel a little weird about seeing her. Sure, alone. no problem. I gotta stop by the hotel and pick up some things because I I said I'd spend the night with her tonight. You're really a good friend, you know that. She's lucky to have you. I'm sure that you're gonna be a great comfort to her. Well, I don't know that, but I have to try. Um, Bree, if you want to stay in my hotel tonight, you can. Yeah, are you sure? Yeah, it's empty. I mean, I hope it'll be empty anyway. You had to say that. I'm sorry. Look, if you're scared, don't stay there. Oh, look, right. if this nutcase is still around, he's not going to be interested in Bree. What? I'm not glam enough to it's be not stuck? not what is I said. It? Okay. Anyway, is it okay if I bring a friend over? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, fine. Room service is on me. Cool. Well, then maybe I can even forgive him for not showing last night. Yeah. Well, I'll see you later. You ready? Yeah, okay. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. Frankie, get off the phone. You're not as smart as I thought, Carolyn. Oh? The house will be surrounded before you can even hang up the phone. She's at Angie's house? 
Charles, give me a little more credit. We've moved on. You're talking on our phone. I had Dr. Hubbard's calls forwarded. And don't try trace this. We'll be long gone. Damn you, Carolyn. Hey, what's going on? Let me talk to her. Shh. May I speak to Mr. Foster, please? There's no Mr. Foster here. Put him on. Not until I talk to Angela. Charles, you're not in a position to give ultimatum. You want to talk to Jacob? Put her on, now. For you, doctor. Honey. Baby, are you all right? We haven't been hurt. We? Frankie's here, too. Oh, my God. Look, honey, I'll get you out of there. Now, don't you get scared. Charles, your three minutes are up. Mr. Foster, please. Damn you, Carolyn. If you hurt them, I swear to you, I'll take... Mr. Foster, please. Hey, do you remember me, you pathetic woman? You remember me? Mr. Foster? Or do you prefer Mr. Johnson? Let me Johnson? tell you something. Let me tell you something, all right? You don't want me to get my hands on you, because I will kill you. I assume that you remember what happened to your wife and child. And if you haven't already, you might like to relate that experience to Mr. Harrison. But then the good detective knows already what it's like to lose someone near and dear. And if you don't do exactly what I tell you to do, it's going to happen to you both again. I will back off when your client is behind bars for the rest of his miserable life. My client is going to, uh, as they say in the movies, walk. Walk straight to prison. You're looking at two things here, Counselor. You're looking at kidnapping and murder one. You're looking at zilch. You're not going to make either one stick. Then you better have a killer defense. Yeah, it's rather prosaic, actually, but I think it'll work. Entrapment. Entrapment? Uh-huh. <laughs> you really think you're going to get people to believe that Graham forced little Danny boy into the life of crime? The man is the chief of detectives. Danny's an impressionable boy. I'm troubled, I'll grant you, but uh, he's no match for Detective Graham. He's just doing what he was told. You don't really care what happened, do you? Little girl, nine years old, is dead. Young man, Bowman, father, dead. I'll tell you what I care about, detective. I care about the law. And it happens to be on the side of my client. So I'll see you in court. I look forward to it. So do I. You're kind of cute. Well, come on, man. What she want? She wants you and me in exchange for Angie and Frank. She says she's gonna have them tied up in a car somewhere. What? No location? She's gonna call back in an hour when she has it all set up. That must mean that she's gonna she's gonna be calling on the phone somewhere somewhere near that car. And so if we can locate the phone, then we can find Look, a way. You don't you don't understand. There's not gonna be a trade-off. If we both show up, she's gonna kill all four of us, man. Jacob. What are you talking about, Jacob? It's a setup, detective, just like before. Jacob, the worst thing we can do right now is panic. No one's gonna get killed. Yeah, right. How can you be sure of that? Now, Jacob, just calm down. Just listen to me. What? All right. When Carolyn calls up to give us instructions, I'll trace the call and get a location on that phone. Now, Frank and Angie are already in the car. Carolyn's got to be close enough to watch. Now, all we got to do, we have to, we have to stall this exchange long enough so no, that I can... No, man. Uh-uh. I'm not playing games with this lady. Not when Angie and Frank are on the line. What, you think I am? No, I don't. There's got to be another way, man. There's got to be another way. Yeah. Well, don't be shy, man. You got something? You got your car here, right? Yeah. I have an idea. I haven't completely thought it out, but I have an idea. Well, let's just talk about it on the way. Come on. All right. Oh, you all right? Yeah. Yeah, come on. 
You're not fooling me. And I doubt you fool Charles or Jacob. I'm not much for fooling, Dr. Hubbard. You're not going to trade us for them. You're going to kill us. All of us, aren't you? I can't understand it. Which part? You're a doctor. You're so... Or are you? With all the paper to prove it. Doctors are supposed to help people. Not kill them. Yeah, I read that literature, too. Are you really with the FBI? Would you like to see my ID? Then how can you do something like this? I know, it's confusing, isn't it? It's confusing. Yes, I'm a doctor. Yes, I'm with the FBI. Good guys, right? The good guys chase the bad guys and put them away, and justice reigns supreme. Well, to quote Hemingway, isn't it pretty to think so? But it doesn't happen that way. Because the bad guys get out the next day on some asinine technicality. Well, you know, then you first get sad, and then you get angry, and then you do something about it. Like taking the law into your own hands? Somebody has to. They were animals, those people we killed. Drug dealers, pushers. In order to get them off the streets, you had to use hired killers. Isn't that just as bad? And they did what the courts wouldn't do. And sometimes the end justifies the means. How do you justify what happened to Jacob? Well, that was regrettable. But he should have kept his mouth shut about what he saw. You killed his wife and child. Isn't that enough blood to spill? You're a woman who cares about justice. You've just said so. End it here. Walk out that door and let it in now. Let's get out of here. Interrupt your reading. Hey, that was cool the way you put the muzzle on old Alex Masters. Thought he was gonna bust my head open. I had to let him do it. <laughs> I had to let you rot in jail, you stupid jerk. Uh, come on, Jossie. Is that any way to talk to your big brother? Carolyn, you can just walk away. Start over. Come on. Come on. Hey, don't touch me. Don't do you dare push her like that. Shut up. Shut up. Frankie, don't! No, don't! Come on! Please, where are you taking us? Enough talk! Charles and Jacob are not going to walk into your trap. Let's hope you're wrong for both your sakes. Move it! This idea is as crazy as you are. Yeah, well, that's where you come in. The guy's got to look right and he's got to be able to follow instructions. You sure we can find a guy like that here? Yeah, chill, 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 man. Somebody will be along. Frank and Angie out of this. Then, uh, there's our boy. There's our boy. Yeah, he's the 
right height and the right weight. Let's hope he's got a brain. Hey. hey. I mean to scare you, man. What do you want? Uh, you really looking for work? Or is that a scam? Well, what are you, a cop? Do I look like a cop? No cop looks like a cop anymore. Hey, you looking for work or not? What do you got? We got a proposition for you. Can you do me a favor and grab my makeup case off the counter in the bathroom? Sure. Thanks. 